At the end of the 17th century, a fossil collector named Edward Floyd found something in southwest Wales unlike anything he'd ever seen before. He described it as the skeleton of some flat fish and reported it to the Royal Society, along with a drawing, as the first fossil of its kind to be documented by Western scientists. But this strange fossil wasn't a fish at all. It was a trilobite. These animals were some of the most successful creatures to ever live, and studying them has helped scientists to understand more about ancient biology, evolution, and our planet's geological past. And Edward Lloyd may have been the first Royal Society member to spot them, but people all over the world have been fascinated by these fossils for centuries. In fact, there's evidence that we've been collecting trilobites for thousands of years. Trilobites are an extinct group of marine arthropods, most closely related to modern-day horseshoe crabs. The fossils are named for the three lobes going across their bodies, and their shield-like shells are also separated into three parts top to bottom, a head, thorax, and pygidium, which is just a fancy name for the butt. They first appeared on Earth around 520 million years ago during the Cambrian explosion, and quickly became so successful that the Cambrian period became known as the Age of Trilobites. Trilobites thrived in the oceans for some 270 million years before being wiped out, along with 90% of all life on Earth, during the end Permian extinction. And there were more than 20,000 species of them, so they clearly got got the whole go forth and multiply thing down. They mostly stuck to the shallow ocean floor, grazing on what they could find and occasionally burrowing through soft sediments, although some could even swim through open water. And some of them decided to add a little flair to their simple three-lobed bodies, from multifaceted eyes on columns and stalks to weird spines and headdresses thought to be used for defense. Some even had a giant ball on their heads that looks like a little clown nose, which might be the cutest thing I've ever seen. There's a lot to like about these guys, and it's not just researchers who care about trilobites. All over the world, people have been fascinated by them for centuries. Like, I'm talking pre-agriculture. At the end of the 19th century, archaeologists discovered a limestone cave in France filled with artifacts like bone tools and spears, all dating to about 15,000 years ago. But among the debris, they also found something much older, the remains of a 400 million year old trilobite. Now, finding trilobites among limestone isn't usually that surprising, but this discovery was remarkable for several reasons. For starters, there are no trilobites known from the rocks of that area, so this specimen must have come from somewhere else, meaning that whoever carried it all that way really valued it. While it could have come from elsewhere in France, at least one paleontologist thinks it came from modern-day Czechia, 850 kilometers away. The other really fascinating thing about this fossil is that it's really worn down and it has two holes drilled into it, indicating that it was handled often and possibly worn as jewelry. What these Stone Age people thought the trilobite was, or what it meant to them, will probably never know. However, French cave dwellers weren't the only ones to have gathered up trilobite fossils over the years. Some of the most beloved trilobites around only reached icon status thanks to the Industrial Revolution. See, when English engineers figured out how to make basically everything easier with steam power, they needed coal, and a lot of it. So they started digging. In particular, there was plenty of coal in the area around a town of England called Dudley. And they also had plenty of other resources like iron ore, limestone, and fire clay, which meant that there was a lot of digging going on. And alongside their ores and coal, miners found a ton of trilobite fossils, mostly of the species Calamine blumenbachii. The workers called these fossils Dudley locusts, or Dudley bugs. Many of them were the classic shield-like trilobite shape, but some showed the animal a adorably rolled up like a pill bug. And studying the Dudley bug helped scientists figure out that trilobites were in fact arthropods just like pill bugs, albeit very distantly related. In fact, calamine was so abundant and so important in the early history of trilobite science that for a while, all trilobites were referred to as Dudley fossils. But there are plenty of trilobite fans on the other side of the Atlantic too. The indigenous Ute people have been living in the Great Basin area of North America since around 1000 CE. And they have historically collected and worn trilobites, in particular a species called Elrathia kingi. This is the most common trilobite fossil in North America, in part because of where they chose to call home back in the day. Elrathia lived during the Middle Cambrian, around 500 
100 million years ago. And compared to most other trilobites, this species preferred life on the edge. They lived at the borderline between anoxic and disoxic waters. In other words, right at the spot where the oxygen was lowest. Not many animals would have been able to handle such low oxygen, so Elrathia would have had the seafloor pretty much to themselves. In fact, scientists think that these trilobites may have been the very first animals adapted to survive in such low oxygen environments. And these environments also just happen to be the best places to be if you want to become a fossil. For a start, there are no other animals around to chow down on the dead bodies and fewer decomposers to break them down as well. Plus, the water is fairly calm and still, so their bodies won't get smashed up by the waves. And finally, there's always fine sediment raining down from above, making a perfect muddy tomb. Eventually, that mud turns into fine-grained shale, capable of preserving the finest details of a trilobite exoskeleton. So, Elrathia fossils are super common in the Cambrian rocks of North America, which is why the Ute people of the Great Basin have been able to collect them for centuries. They called them lizard's feet and water bugs, suggesting they did know the fossils were related to living things. And these fossils were thought to have medicinal properties too. Trilobite pendants were thought to offer protection against everything from sickness to sore throats and even diphtheria. So people around the world have appreciated these fossils long before we even knew what they were. And there are plenty of fossils collectors today who still treasure them. And speaking of collectors, we've got something really special for our Roxbox subscribers this month. Each one will get a fossil of Elrathia kingi, the same species that was gathered by the Ute people. Keep it on your shelf, wear it as a necklace, the choice is yours. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can head over to scishow.rocks to hop on the waiting list. And keep an eye out for some more ways to join the club soon. Thanks for watching.